knows but don't, doesn't use it? Yes. Well, how, how did you find out? What, what do you know? I mean, where did you learn about mind mapping? session before uh, with uh, Tony Buzan. You went to a session with Tony Buzan? Yeah. You can give this court this session. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dr. Rich. <laughs> okay. In 2007. Uh, but so far, uh, I don't use it. Okay. Uh, just one time. All right. So what, what I'm going to try to do today is that when you know something and you don't use it, it's like you don't know it. You have absolutely no benefit from it. Benefit comes from use. And that's why, for those of you who are involved in training, if your training is not results-based, you are losing your money and your time and your effort. Because 50% of what people remember about training is lost after two days. Two days. So what happens two weeks after the training? They remember. I had a training one time, you know, it was about, there were some really good ideas and the trainer was really good. That's it. So, don't use it, you don't lose it. You know, in English this says, if you don't use it, you lose it. It's exactly what ends up happening. So today what we're going to talk about, for those of you who don't know about mind mapping, I'm going to give you a, an overview. For those of you who do know, I'm going to show you what to, how, how to use it. In HR or any other, uh, any other area, but we're going to concentrate on HR because most of us are HR professionals here. Okay, so. Let me just say that, that I, I do uh, training in mind mapping and I, I fell into it sort of by accident. Why? Because I was very, very frustrated at the design of training. Huh? And then I, sometimes the design, I, the, the training courses were so long, especially if you're using three or four day courses, and I would lose myself in the number of slides and in the handouts and in all of that. And I was looking for something that would allow me to have a better understanding, like a big picture of, of, of it. And then, by luck, I started researching it, and I'm a very visual learner, so it attracted me right away. And then, all of a sudden, one day, you know how something sort of hits you all of a sudden? I mean, maybe you knew it before, but all of a sudden, the pieces fit together, and I said, oh my god, I had, I had a training that was awful. I hated it. I hated how the training went. But to try to fix it, I didn't know even where to start. So what I did is I started to, talk, to, to draw the parts that I wanted in it. And then I got even more frustrated because every time I drew a part that I wanted in it, I lost my thinking about something else. So I did the opposite, which is I took the course, I took all the PowerPoint slides, and I must have had a hundred of them, it was a long course. I took the course and I mind mapped the course the way it was. <coughs> you know what I'm saying? Not the way I, I, I thought it was, not the way I wanted it to be, but the way it was. And what did I find out? I found out the design was awful. I found out that I had too many slides in one area and not enough in another, that I had, I had <coughs> activities in some areas and not activities in others, and I, the only reason I found it out is because when I tried to make sense of it by using the mind map, some of it didn't make sense. Like I said, my God, why do I have six slides on this topic? Do you understand what I'm saying? But, but if you don't have that ability, the big picture ability, you can't see it. You get into the slides, you get into the content, and then it's over. I tried the other way, which is to do an outline. It didn't work either, because with the outline, what happens in the outline of a book? Let's say that you're looking, at, you're at Virgin Store, and you were looking to buy a book, and you look at the outline. And the outline is a couple of pages long. What happens when I turn the first page and go into the second page? What happens to the information in my mind from the first page? It's lost. Why? Why is it lost? Because it's sequential, which means that my mind can only take in a certain amount of information, like this. The minute I turn the page, everything that was in my mind is gone. And I start again, and I keep going back and forth. You know, how many of you have gone back and forth? And so mind mapping eliminates that. It's the big picture. But you can zoom in on details, but it gives you the big picture, and it forces you to make sure you understand the connection between the ideas. You cannot make a list in a mind map. 
So if you can't make a list, it forces you to make connections between ideas. That's the biggest advantage. So, how many of you, when you studied in college and you were studying for an exam, how did you study? Just reading. Huh? Just reading. Just reading. Reading and? So the re the reading was for you to, to memorize, okay? What did, did, did some of you take notes to remember things? Yes. How did you take your notes? Uh, I, I write, I'm writing the titles of each unit. So yes. Then I go back to each details. Okay. So you were writing the titles and then you would do the. T How many of you actually tried to sort of draw was little branching. diagrams and things and arrows and circling things? I was uh, branching the point or ma were, making it as as a pyramid. Start with a, with a main okay, main so main top a point and thing. everything related to it. Okay. How many of you would draw maybe little little images or something? Or when you were trying to remember on your exam, how many of you, as as you're sitting there, say, "Oh my God, I remember it was at the top in the right hand corner over there, and it was I had put an arrow." What What is your mind trying to do? Your mind is trying to create an image of the information. Images are worth a thousand words. <coughs> So why are we not taught mind mapping in school? By the way, not, not, now they're doing it in, in the United States and Canada, etc. Before they weren't doing it either over there. It was still the old system of just, you know, the, the sequential learning, sequential lists, which, is, which are okay for certain things, but not when you want the connections, not when give it to you. Okay, so what we're going to do is basically we're going to start those of you who are trainers, do you notice that we haven't started the, the, the PowerPoint yet, right? Why? Sorry. Why did I not start the training with the, the PowerPoint the session? Not, not just about mind mapping. Why is it? I'm just trying to remind you, those of you who are trainers, why should you never start a training session with PowerPoint? I mean, I have it here as a background. This is just our, our schedule, right? Just to try to give us uh, our, uh, attract our attention first. So then you yes. go to the details. Yes, attract attention, what else? Answer. I will uh, attract the attention for this uh, slide. Okay, so is this, if, if, I, if you could do this on your own, I would just send you the PowerPoint presentation. Why are you coming here? Exactly, so the idea is about connection, right? If you're going to train, you have to make the connection with the people before you start. PowerPoint is not the training. PowerPoint is only a small tool in the training. You don't start and you don't end with PowerPoint. You as a trainer start and you as a trainer end. It is the, the, this is just a tool. It's a kind of interaction. Right? But I, I'm, I'm mentioning this because I'm seeing more and more people who you just use PowerPoint as the training. It's like we almost don't need the trainer, you know? Everything is on the PowerPoint slide, right? Okay. So, we have somebody who actually, yeah, usually he smiles, he looks a little serious there. But this man is, we call him the guru of mind mapping. Tony Buzan is a UK professor, and he's done research in terms of brain research and other things, and basically he came up with the concept, okay? And we're gonna look at it from the point of view of how do we use it as a tool for HR. <coughs> now, in terms of software, if you want the best software possible, you can buy Tony Buzan software. It's called iMindMap. And it is beautiful. It has all the colors and you can put all kinds of things, but of course, it's a commercial product, right? If you're lucky, you have a company that owns, uh, that has it, then that's wonderful. You have some companies that you, you buy a company license and they, they're licensed for a number of users. I think, I don't know if they have a, a, a fee. I would imagine they have a fee probably for individual users as well. But let's assume that you are not interested in buying a software program. Here are some uses of mind maps. Umps uh, was talking about the meeting agenda, uh, uh, meeting minutes. And that would mean that you would actually send an agenda out to people and instead of sending it the way we do now, 
you can send it using a mind map. We'll, we'll talk about that. I'll show you later what it looks like. But you can also use it for minutes, right? So I send it as an agenda. I can also put the minutes in afterwards as part of the mind map. Summary of an article, a chapter of a book, or a whole book. Can I, can I, can I take a, a book, basically, and do the table of contents and put it into main chapters? Yes? Can I take each of the chapters now and fill in the details for each of the chapters? Definitely. So the advantage of the software, by the way, a lot of what I do is I do by hand. I do software when I want to do a presentation, but if I'm going to do it for myself, I do it by my hand. Why? Because I, it, it, because it's just I, I find it more more attractive, more intellectually more stimulating, etc. Okay. So if we're talking about a project, by the way, in terms of the the the, uh, the software, the good thing about the software is that you will you will see a certain amount of information. Then you can click into one of the branches, and the branches will actually open up, and you can then zoom in down into details. Okay. Project. Let's say that you're thinking about a, a new project. You put the project in the middle, and you start to think about all of the things that you need to be talking about. And I'm going to show you examples of that. I just wanted to do an overview first with you. Problem solving. Here's my problem. Losing customers or employees not coming to work on time. You put that in the middle and then you start to brainstorm and look at ideas and then group the ideas. The good thing about mind mapping is that you can keep adding. You know, there's a, usually there's a lot of space for you to use, right? Brainstorming, to-do list. What am I going to do today? What do I have to do today? Instead of making a list, you can actually do it by mind map. All right, so let me show you the videotape of Tony Buzan, who talks about, it's a five-minute tape. He talks about mind mapping, what it means, and then we'll discuss that, and then we'll go into the examples. And then afterwards, I'm going to have you work on examples. I'll have you do some mind maps, okay, so that we can... Uh, I'll, I'll have you do some mind maps alone first, and then afterwards you'll do some mind maps in a group, and we'll we'll uh, have you put on a flip chart paper and do a little presentation to the group on on an HR use of mind map. Okay. All right. So let me show you the video. ideas or find inspired solutions to any problem. Tony Buzan is the world's leading author and top lecturer on the brain of Can learning. you hear? He has changed the lives of over 250 million people with his revolutionary system of mind mapping. So, what is a mind map? <coughs> a mind map is a thinking tool that reflects externally what goes on inside your head. The, the mind map was like a Swiss army knife for the brain. Anything I wanted to do in terms of thinking, contemplation, cognition, remembering, creating. The mind map was the, the ideal tool for that. Mind mapping is straightforward and fun. We start in the center of a blank page. We connect branches to the central image and connect second and third level branches to the first and second and so on. The brain is radiant. It thinks centrally and explodes out in all directions. Branches are curved and tapered rather than straight lined. They are organic and free flowing as opposed to structured and uniformed. The branches on a mind map are the reflection of the way the brain thinks. So when you think of anything, if you think of chair, you have your picture and then you have your associations of that. The brain thinks by imagination and association. The, the reason why traditional note-taking in lists and lines doesn't work, actually is counterproductive, is because it doesn't have the associations. If you don't have associations, you don't have connection. If you don't have connection, 
you don't have memory and you don't have thinking. In a mind map, the branches are always curved, curvilinear. Reason why? Nature is curvilinear. And if all the branches are straight, it is literally rigid, similar, and therefore boring. The brain will very quickly get unhappy with a whole bunch of rigid, straight lines. It gets absorbed and intrigued by the beauty of curvilinear. We add one word to each branch. One of the important points in structure in a mind map is to have one word per branch. Why? Because if you have one word, that one word with all its associations is free. If you put them together, you're making it more rigid. And very simply, for example, if you were mind mapping and you wanted to put Tony Buzan, if you put Tony Buzan, you've stuck them together with glue. But if you put Buzan and then Tony, you've got the freedom to radiate out my father, my mother, my brother, the history of the name, etc. So the single word per line gives you much more freedom, much more creativity, much more clarity. Ideally, the length of the word should be the length of the branch for the very simple reason that if this word here is then placed next to this word here and the branch and the word of the same line, then the meeting point is very close. So the two words are in space, close, i.e. they're connected. If you've got one word, little word here on a long branch, and a little word over here in a long branch, the words are disconnected. We don't use color in notes traditionally because we are told not to in school. All the research says exactly the opposite should be so. We love color, and studies at London University show that people who use color and image in their imagination when they are learning and trying to remember inevitably do better than those who don't. We use images throughout. Throughout a mind map, there should be key words and key images. And if an image is easy for you to do, you know, instead of people, you can quickly just draw three little stick figures. The image is a picture, the picture is worth a thousand words. Another important point about the use of images, the use of associations, is that all the great geniuses did that. So if you start to use associations, you start to use images externally, you will join the pantheon of the great geniuses, like Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo did it. Darwin did it. Beethoven did it. Every genius used image and associations, and a mind map is the process by which you can do that. It's a, it's a genius tool. Comments? <laughs> How to make an association and connections? Huh? How to make association and connection okay, to be able to remind and making associations about making connections. Yes. To be able to think and remember. You can use an image. Uh, the, the image can can uh, explain a uh, thousand. Uh, yes, you can use images. Why? Because we remember images much better than words. Definitely. Yes. Those are very good speech. Uh, no association. No connection. No connection. No memorizing and no thinking. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if I'm just memorizing, I'm not thinking. Right? So connection comes from making the associations in your mind about how those concepts come together. He is talking about uh, the connections and uh, simplify your ideas and uh, how to, to memorize your, uh, okay. your ideas by pictures and images and all of that. Okay. Did you want to say something? No. Anybody else? Yes. 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 What I like is that not to write two words in one branch. Yes. Uh, because it really, it's very rigid and it will lose, you will lose connection. The minute you write two words, you cannot now break those okay. two words break into more than that. So one word per branch, yes. Using colors, I'm going to use the language. Yes. And we know when we were your kids, little kids, they love color, don't they? And they remember things by color. But then in school they tell us never to use color. 
Like there, there are lots of things that actually would help us are not being used. Yes. Actually, the man did a very important thing that he linked the brain as a tool, uh, as a tool of thinking in the human body and the, his psychology. Okay. And uh, to me, the, the, his his psychology is relaxed and the, the brain uh, thinks a lot. Yes. The more relaxed we are, actually, the more thinking happens, right? When we're under stress, very often what happens is that, that the thinking is reduced. Why? Okay. Because we're, we're, the pressure gets to us and, 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 and our, our ideas are not actually being allowed to go out. They're actually being forced into certain areas. Yes? It's okay for me, but in the, in the last minute, uh, when he speaks about uh, the free emplacement, emplacement uh, we uh, connected Tony to I didn't understand this. How can I? Uh, I will. Uh, I, uh, I will be free in this connect. How? He's saying that that when you put the, when you put you talking about the two words together, the freedom to. All right. So what happens is this: the, our brain, our brain does not work like this. By the way, our brain does not work like like a list. That's not how the brain works. And the studies of the brain, they find out that when a thought happens. An electric impulse actually happens in your brain. When that impulse gives off, it creates other impulses. So the brain, the brain radiates. It doesn't think this way. An idea, an idea, an idea, an idea, an idea. That's how your brain works. So he's saying that when you put two things together, you are locking them in. So better to keep one idea, each idea separate. That way, from that idea can come all kinds of, you get more ideas in other words. That's what, that, that's what he meant. So try as much as possible, unless the two words are really a concept. Do you know what I mean? His name. If, if I put Buzan, I have, I have the ability to talk about a number of things. The minute I put Tony Buzan, I can't put anything connected with Buzan that doesn't connect also with him. It, it's just more limiting. So sometimes maybe you want to do that. But in general, you don't want to do that. You want to have free association in terms of ideas, right? The more a free association you have, the more ideas you will have. But why when he said that the line should be curved, curved. or a straight line? This what's the difference? Because the minute a, a straight line ends, your thinking stops. It's a waking up with something the brain. Happen to our you know what I mean? You, we it's are, yeah, and if you look at nature, you look at basically, where do you really have straight lines in nature? Do they exist? Never. Our, your, our natural tendency is curved. Everything basically is curved. Even the horizon line is not like this. The horizon line is like this, basically, right? So the idea is the more curved it is, the more natural it is, the more it leads to other ideas. But the minute I stop, my thinking stops as well. And this, this, is, is this uh, curve is the meaning of the free. Yes, exactly. The curves allow you to to investigate and to go into other areas. That's why uh, those of you who do brainstorming, if you've ever done brainstorming, you never want to stop the ideas from going on. So you never, in a brainstorming, you never say good idea, bad idea, no good, and no, no money. No, you just keep the ideas going. Why? Because that's how you get more ideas. The minute you stop and you say something, the idea stops. Okay? So we want everything to flow. It's, it's very natural. You, you keep it going until, until by, by itself, it stops, not you stopping it. What else? Anything else you want to ask or say about anything that he has said? I want to ask you this question. If you're doing training, do you think that you could use mind mapping in training? Yes. Yeah. When would you use it? How? Yeah, the outline of the course. Well, that if you are a facilitator, you will use it more than as a trainer. So you can use it in, yeah, yeah. definitely facilitating training yeah. Yeah. for meetings, whatever it happens to be. So let me t let me show you two uh, that that are real ones that were done. for the one that you just put on my desktop. So this one is not, I didn't put it on a PowerPoint slide, so you're not going to see it the same way, but I wanted to show you. Okay, so 
you can't see it well there, but I, I teach a TOT class for Cambridge University, okay? So this is module four of TOT. TOT four, the module is evaluation. I give this to the students basically as their agenda. They can see how many main ideas do you have in this module? Six. You can see them, they're basically all in, all in blue. You notice I have done little, little images, these are just like drawn by hand. But you have here basically this is, I can't even see it. Okay, let me see it from here. <laughs> uh, the first one is future. Future what? No. Introductions. Or <laughs> intro. It's intro. All right. So you have intro. Number one is no. It's not intro. Sorry. It is future. It's six. We're starting with one instead. You see where it says intro first. First. Right here. 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 First. And then a training program here. And then here professional. And here goals. And here RDP. And here. Future. So, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, so we started with here. This is the first one. And you can see here that you basically have two main ideas, correct? And then this main idea has two sub ideas, and each one of these sub ideas has sub ideas. So, if you, if you take this and you give it to somebody and say, here, this is how our department functions here. This is how we're going to have the meeting next week. Here, this is what the project looks like. You can imagine that you can do anything you want. Now somebody used it, one of my students used it in a very unusual way that I had not thought about. So I'm going to show you because when they do their presentations, I, I force them to do a mind map, to use the mind map either as a tool inside the presentation or as a tool for them as a trainer. So here, what happens, you know what Mahluba is? <laughs> huh? It's a Palestinian dish. Okay. And this girl is Palestinian and she was supposed to do a trial session, a training session presenting that was her trial session and I told them they could do it on any topic they wanted what I wanted them to do is not do a presentation do a training a mini training session it was a 10 minute training session and what she did is she taught us how to make a ruba. now this is a recipe so what happened she has here whoops okay. Back. Ah, okay. yeah oh you have to hold this okay she has here the instructions. She starts off with the ingredients, you see? Here are all the ingredients that you need. Here are the instructions of what you do with the ingredients. This is how you would actually serve it. This is how you would cook it. See, cooking, cooking pot, the layers. And here are the layers. <coughs> Cooker, 40 to 45 minutes. Can you please send us this? <laughs> She was so good that, because I, I, I'm asking them to be creative. I said, look, we have to remember your training session in some way. So, so what she did is she made two little ovens out of cardboard from boxes. She brought the ovens in to the class. She had uh, all of the ingredients cut up in papers in, in different colors. Name. We had to cut them with scissors and do the layers and put them in the oven and count and, 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 and time the oven. Yeah. Fabulous. In 10 minutes. So the idea is that when you can get people to think a little bit outside the box, all kinds of wonderful, under, wonderful things happen. Okay. So I have never seen a recipe done in a mind map. But obviously you can do just about anything in a mind map, right? It's just that uh, you're, what stops you is your imagination, that's all. Because anything is possible. All right, so now let's look at it from the point of view of HR. And before I tell you about how you can use it in HR, I want you to tell me how you would use it in HR. 
And I don't want you to say meetings, okay? I want you specifically to tell me in the different functions of HR, how do you think you could use it? Yes. Like an HR process like recruitment, for example. Okay, in recruitment. How would you use it in recruitment? Give me an example. Okay, you put recruitment uh, center, and you could have a branch like a source for you, recruitment process for you, <coughs> the result of recruitment. Okay, so the whole concept, it could be a whole concept of recruitment, right? Recruitment, the process, let's say the resources, uh, the, the, the results, etc. That would be one way of doing it. Somebody else? Yes? So I use it in our training project. Uh, example? Yeah, just e-learning project, for example, yeah. Well, uh, then I already extract all features that I, I need to found it in my project and uh, then after that I need from this option to do one, two, three, four, and the second one, one, two, three, four. So just summarize all the okay. projects in the mind mapping. Okay. Somebody yeah. else? Payroll. Payroll. How would you use it in payroll? Yeah, we, we, we would write payroll in the middle of the page and then branch it to misconduct, salaries, uh, uh, what vacations. Uh. Yes, all the all of the elements that affect the payroll. Definitely. And, and from misconduct we can get up uh, Types of misconduct. Yeah, so you could go yes. into subtypes. And salaries, ranges of the subtypes. Okay, anybody else? Yes. We can use it for the HR strategy in the middle and uh, branches of all functions of HR and all objectives. Okay, so your HR strategy. Because you could HR. map that. Very HR strategy for 2014. And here are all of the major elements you have to consider. Who else? Yes. Uh, BMS, performance management system. Yes. And uh, good ideas. Uh, uh, strategy and objectives, uh, scope, uh, competences, tools. Uh. Definitely. Who else uh, wanted to say something? I'm here. No? Can I use that for the organization chart? Definitely. I'm going to show you an example. Yes. yes, you can use it for organizational chart. What else? We use it to solve a problem. For example, we have, we have to increase or increase our empowering. Yes. So we need to make a chart how to do that and uh, what is our challenges okay. and how to solve it. Or de decrease uh, uh, turnover, let's say. Yeah. Or increase retention, whatever, whichever way you want to do it. Yes. Uh, I maybe uh, used it uh, previously with uh, solving a coaching problem with my supporter. Yes. I have written a map to him and we reached our solution. Definitely. Anybody else wanted to say something? For conflict, you have a problem with somebody. Like a, a conflict with an employee, a conflict yeah, with yeah. a team member, a conflict with whatever. It yes. seems like the five war in problem solving technique. Five, five. Yes, five wise. Yes, you can map out the five wise. Yes. yes. Yes, definitely, and then it would give you the information. What else? <laughs> a little bit louder, please. Yes. Like um, uh, we need to give a very example. How to manage the conflict of business with uh, colleagues in a rail uh, example. Who, the one who is talking about conflict? Yeah. Have, uh, he's, he's asking you ideas if you can give us an idea of how you would use it in a real example. Ideas, uh, <coughs> the problem itself, uh, you are to, uh, uh, how to. Um, Sophisticated these problems by points, for example, okay. and the way of solving uh, new ideas how to, uh, to reach the best result or uh, uh, solving for uh, other problem, uh, um, uh, how to say, uh, 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 near to this problem, sometimes in, in, in job we found other things. Something, yes. Okay, so in other words, let's say that I have a problem with a person. Yeah, yeah. yeah? I, could, I could look at background of the person. How many years has the person been here? Da, 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 da. Oh, then you could say sources of the problem. Do we write the name of the person in the middle? Sure. If you're having a problem with that person, you could say problem with X. Right? You look at maybe the background of the person. You could look at the personality of the individual. What kind of person are you dealing with? You can look at the history, the, the, history, the background of the person in terms of the job. You can look at the environment that the person is in, whether they have in, 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 they have problems with other people. And you look at to possible kind of solutions. My impact on yes. how. In other words, I could look at what did I do to help this problem, <coughs> not to help, but maybe to cause it. Yeah. And sometimes I, I, I we don't look at it. 
Okay, don't do it again. Exactly. I'm trying to get um, something. Oh, HR. Together. Are there some things on here that we have not talked about? Can we use it for a job vacancy? Vacancy. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Position. Requirements, etc. Hmm? What about the JD? Job description. Can you use a, 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 a mind map for a job description? Yes. Yeah. If it's a project, you can uh, track the steps by a major project, <coughs> and you can uh, allocate resources and uh, talk about the job analysis methods uh, and track all of the major aspects. And you can actually do a mind map, a JD using a mind map. Position, huh? job level, and job analysis. Job yeah, level. job analysis. You can look at uh, tasks, key key tasks. You can look at re job requirements. You can look at uh, reporting to etc. I mean, you can you can do it. Interviews. You can do it. It's very easy to to be done. Recruitment interview. Uh -huh. Kind of interviews. The type of interview, kind yes. Of or IQ what or kind of testing is going to be done, or the, the results of the test, yes, the or, evaluation or the questions I'm going to ask. Here are the, here are the questions I'm going to ask during this interview. Yeah, you can use before and after the interview. Before and after the interview, you could put something in the mind map of the information you have before, and you fill in the information that you have missing, right? What about shortlisting? Can you have a mind map of shortlisted people with, with their particular strong points? Yes, according, Definitely. According to the sectors and departments. And, and might it be easier? Whoever will be or, or bending or accepting or so Keep in mind your advantage of the mind map is you have everything on one piece of paper. In a visually organized way. It makes your life much simpler, believe me. And anything. Okay. Employee induction onboarding. New people coming in. Here are all the things that need to happen in the induction program. We put them all in. Organization chart, we talked about that. Employee termination. Employee promotion. So termination, the steps of the termination. Or it could be how, how come this employee is being terminated. Right? You can have on all of the basic main reasons why the termination happened. Or the promotion. <coughs> succession planning profile. Can I develop a succession profile? Yes. Definitely. I can say, okay, the ideal person we want in this company, this is a background of this type, maybe attitudes, maybe skills, maybe da 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 da, you know? So you can put it up, you can set it up in any way that you like. The HR policy? Can you put in the policies and procedures? Definitely. And of course, we talked about this at the earlier on. So now, what I want to show you is some examples, because I'm going to ask you to do one yourself, before we do one as a group. Here are ways that you can use mind maps. And this is, a, this is an overview. So to make a decision, to make an argument, in other words, to maybe either defend a decision or to have to argue with someone, you're trying to present your opinion, planning for a meeting. Of course, it's used, by the way, in education and teaching now a lot. Maybe not, not here, but outside it's used a lot. Research and data updates. Yes, I can do research and basically give all of the recent research on a particular topic very easily. <coughs> Pre-writing and writing. This is for people who do, you know, if you're going to write a paper, you're going to write a thesis, you're going to write a, 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 an article for a newspaper or a magazine, whatever, you can, you can do pre-writing, which is the draft part, and then you look at what, what you want to change in for, the, for the thing. Um, appointments and tasks, brainstorming, idea generation, and of course presentations, because we know that mind maps and presentations work quite well. So, here is a daily agenda. You see? 
You have the times here. It says unscheduled, 1.30, 2 o'clock. Unscheduled. Unscheduled means that I can even plan for a little bit of things in case certain things happen. I can put it into my overview, right? 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, ball game here. Things to remember. Breakfast with marketing. To, today, it starts off 9 o'clock here. Phone call, update. So you see, you can do it. This, this one is made with what? Uh, it doesn't say, huh? The other one said... It's the biggest one. Uh, a mind map made with simple mind for iPad. There are a number of different software programs. Even if you don't have a software program, you can do this as you're sitting at your desk in the morning. Take your coffee, relax a little bit with the coffee in front of you. Those of you who are visual learners, it's a great way to relax and to plan your day. How many of you are visual learners? You like to see things in front of you. And most of you. How many of you are auditory learners? You like to hear things instead. Okay, so mind mapping is not as comfortable for auditory learners, <laughs> but it definitely will help you even if you don't like it so much. How many of you like to draw? Like, I mean, even if, it doesn't mean you're an artist, but you like playing with pencils and crayons and that kind of, most of you. Okay, so you, you'll love mind mapping because it allows you to do all of that. All right, now, as a training aid, this is about email. Can you imagine how easy it is to be able to say, okay, if, I, if, I, if you're doing a meeting maybe with your staff and you're having some problems with the use of email, huh? you can sit with them and say, okay, let's talk about email. Here we, can, we talk about format. Here's the format. Here's the subject line. Grab attention, give information, give purpose. So very, very specific. And you notice that here it says subject line. Now, it has two words. Why is it okay here to have two words? Because it will draw my attention uh, far away about subject, subject if I eliminated uh, the word line. So I have to uh, okay. write subject line. Yeah, and if I just put line, I'm not going to know what I'm talking about. And so also, sometimes you need the two words, but actually it's one idea. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's, yeah. You need, to, you need to, to go into it. So you can see it's very easy, very easy to read. And the one, the Mahluba one, by the way, that I showed you before, she did it by hand. She did a really good job. That looked pretty good, but it was done purely by hand with using markers. She did not have software. So you can make it very attractive by hand. Okay, so before we go any further with this, I'm going to stop for a minute and then afterwards we'll take a break. But I want you, I asked you to bring some, some supplies. How many people remember to bring supplies? A number of you did. Okay, cool. <coughs> I want you to ask you to bring a couple of uh, some uh, paper and some highlighters and a pencil and eraser, that kind of thing. I would like for you to go ahead and do your CV. Your CV. I want you to pretend that you're going for a job interview. Okay? And your, your, your CV is on a, on a mind map. You have, by the way, that's a great thing to give to somebody for in a job interview. Number one, because a lot of them don't know what it is, so that will impress them. And number two, you actually have all of that information. You can, you can make what you want to stand out, stand out. Through the use of color, through the use of little images, etc. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to pretend that you're going for a job for in whatever job that you're in now, or whatever job you would like to have, and you're basically going to present yourself huh, using the mind map. Your, the mind map is your CV. Messages. These are all sub-ideas. Yes? This one, short paragraphs, is a sub-idea. And the explanation is not one-liners. So when you have a curved line that goes up like that, it is just an explanation of the idea. It is not a sub-idea. Okay? And... You see format, opening, and here's the opening. This is with regards. This is what they want you to use. It's not a sub-idea of the opening. It is actually uh, a definition or an example of the opening. 
So I want you to keep that in mind. And you, I, wa I want you to look at here how easy it is to read the main ideas. That's how yours should look like. You see, look, look at these. These are bigger, aren't they? The, the things are thicker. Here they chose that everything having to do form with format is one color. It's not always going to be the same. If we go back for a minute, you notice here, they actually uh, do, they did the same thing in terms of color. 10 o'clock is, is this color. 11 o'clock is this color. 12 is this color. So they're keeping it consistent. This one is, okay. Yeah. Now, I want to, I want to, yes, does somebody have a question? Fair, this uh, something I'm doing and uh, I hope to see your uh, opinion about it. Uh, the first or the main idea, I'm coloring it with the, uh, uh, the same color. Yes. And then the, uh, the second stage or the second sub subtitle, uh, all of them another color. Definitely. So everyone can see the map. Definitely. He can know you can say all main ideas are in red, all sub ideas are in green, all sub sub ideas black. are in black, let's say. Yeah. When I look at it, it's very easy for me to look. It is about being logical and consistent. It is about understanding the connections. We were talking about that before. It is not about throwing words on a piece of paper. And anybody who sees the mind map should be able to read it without wondering. They might not know what the content is, but they understand the organization uh, because of your use of color. Yes? I'm guessing the air conditioning. Oh, you're just using the air conditioning? Okay. <laughs> All right. Now here is a concept of HR that they've mind mapped. You see performance system factors, levers for effective performance. They talk about direction, personal capacity, motivators, work design, information, performance feedback, resources. Very easy, much easier to give somebody that than to give them, you know, 15 pages of text that they're not going to remember. And of course, you know that under here, we, this, is a, this is a software program. You can click in here and it will tell you the data that, that it would have, right? You can click down into more information. Okay, here is an induction. So induction, we mean orientation. New employees coming in. What do you have? Introduction. The history, the vision, mission, introduction, key personnel, organizational chart. What we do, introduction to business lines, business aims and goals. How we work, how we work, organization culture, how do we want our team to work, performance related expectations, time tracking, interfacing between teams. It's very easy to design something that is on one piece of paper, basically the big picture or the small picture, depending on how far down you go, of what it is that you want them to understand. People remember much better when they see something like that than when you have a table of contents. Does that make sense to you? But remember, it needs to be clean. You notice that all this is the same color, it's written in the same way. Whether you do it by hand or you do it by software, you still have to be consistent. Okay, that code of conduct here. And here they have actually, they have a lot of information. I'm not sure that that would be a good idea necessarily. I think it's probably more effective if the information, when you click, you get the, all the information because I think you want to keep the map as easy to read as possible. But maybe it depends on the purpose. All right, here's another example. A third three month employee review. So at the, we have a probationary period at the end of the three months. You're talking about what are we going to look at? The review of work. Well, what kind of work? Planned versus completed. Quality of work. Quantity of work. Processes. Example, way of working. Formal and informal. Now, why did they not have formal and informal in two separate lines? Processes, way of working, they have formal and informal. They have to choose. Is it a question of choice? I don't know. And you know, I have a problem with this mind map. Because I look at this and I say, what does that mean? 
it doesn't mean I put formal and informal together into one. It doesn't mean that it should be formal, informal. Mm -hmm. We're talking about processes. You could have an employee who follows formal processes very well and is very bad with informal process. Do you understand what I mean? So when I, when I see something like this, I don't know what it means that it's not a good thing to have on a mind map. Yeah, I should be able to understand, even if I don't know the, what the content inside what it is, I should be able to understand what it means. Okay, system tools proficiency. Now here, <coughs> since it's only one word, you see, instead of doing a, a curved line, here they're doing straight lines. But it's still an explanation. Proficiency is an explanation of the systems and tools. They're only going to be looking for <coughs> proficiency in systems and tools. Okay? That's why I have a problem with this. Because this has two ideas. This has one idea, okay. But two ideas on one line. I don't know. Uh, attention, uh, so here personal, attendance, attitude, effort, enthusiasm, relationship with peers, personal objectives. And issues raised by employing training requirements, improvement points. So, very easy. Can I give something like that to an employee and say, here, this is how we're going to review you at the end of the three months? Yes. Do you think that it would help the employee? Yes. Definitely. Much better than giving them three or four sheets of paper to read, right? Or giving them a handbook sometimes, which most of them not, never even read. <coughs> Policies and procedures. Okay, <coughs> any questions about what we've, we've done so far? Did you have a question? Yeah. I'm going to send you thoughts. Am I going to send you what? No. <laughs> but I, I, can, I can tell you that there are lots of uh, lots of images. If you go in, uh, go into Google, Google, and just go into images and look for um, mind maps, you're going to find lots of images. Okay? This is wonderful. Yeah. Well, I had to go through a lot of them to get some. Some of them are just you know not not worthy of, of training. <laughs> okay. Here's another training. Yes. Let me go back. Uh, we don't it's, we don't see the, this kind of format, the kind of mind mapping when we are reading job description, for example. Uh, the actual job description it is only written in uh, yeah. lines and rules, yeah. just just text. Yeah. So. But it doesn't have it doesn't have to be, right? Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, anything I could put on a text <coughs> sheet, I can put on a mind map. Correct. Uh, why don't we? Show the them to others by experts, for example, for uh... Yeah, it would be a great... Look, the thing is this, the concept of mind mapping in Egypt is almost non-existent. You know, that's, that's part of the problem. I mean, there are some people there who know it and use it, but in general, it's not used. It last... Uh, two years ago, we did training for a company up in Alex, and we did, we did training for all of their white collars. It's a, it's a natural gas company. We did training for all of their, their people in mind mapping. Why? Because the company wanted to use mind mapping as a tool inside of the company. And of course, it makes a big difference. In terms of productivity, when it's, when it's done properly. I'm giving you an overview here in a very short period of time. But normally, what, what we would be doing is that we would do a real mind map, you know what I mean, in, in detail, and go over it in detail and make sure that it's done correctly, and then we go on to the next point. Do you know what I'm saying? So this is better than not having it, but in there it was a two-day program. So we did mind mapping for brainstorming, we did it for organizing ideas, we did it for problem solving, we did, we did examples, different examples together as a group. Because the point is about using this is much more effective and easier to do once you have an understanding of it and, and you have a little bit of practice using it. Then it works beautifully, yes. And we can, we can actually give uh, employees, I think they would appreciate much more getting something like that than getting a text. The, the, the change expected in this company, this company. Yes. Uh, had, had it? I believe it has. I mean, basically, here's, here, here was the, the thinking behind it. Uh, they decided, they, they did a, a trial, a trial of the, of the training. Uh, so we tried it on some team managers. We had uh, 12 people in the first, the first thing. And then we did an evaluation. They did an evaluation, and they looked at 
the ability of the team, uh, the team supervisors to use it with their teams. Okay, so the idea was this: for problem solving, for running their meetings, because they wanted them, they wanted the meetings to be more productive. They use it for agenda. They use it for problem solving, for for uh, um, brainstorming, for. Uh, even, even in terms of um, focusing in, on ideas. So after the brainstorming, what you were talking about before. So let, let me go back a little bit so you have an understanding. Let's say that you want to be, brainstorm some solutions. Hmm? Let's say that we, for the sake of uh, discussion, we are going to brainstorm how to improve the traffic situation in Cairo. Problem. Improving the traffic situation in Cairo. We do we, there are no we do a brainstorming session, right? In the brainstorming session, there are a, a way, a number of ways to do it. You can decide not to worry about categories at all. Okay? So I just take down the idea. Somebody writes down the ideas. On, we can put it on a flip chart paper and people write down the ideas. Or what we can do is we can take, and uh, we've done this before, you take flip chart paper and you put it against the walls, you know, one after another, make it big, and somebody there writes down the ideas only by concept. So let's say you say infrastructure, people, government, so let's say you have four, uh, four main things, and now I'm, I'm just adding wherever the idea is coming from, I don't care, we're not trying to organize the idea. We put them there, all of the ideas. We go through the ideas afterwards, we highlight the ones that we feel would be a better uh, situation. We take those ideas and we do a mind map of usable ideas. Right? After you do the mind map of usable ideas, you can take one idea and do, a, do further brainstorming with that idea to actually see how you would implement that idea. So it can be used in many ways. It can be used for brainstorming or it can be used for organization. You use it, it's a very flexible tool. You can use it at any time in the process that you like. As the result of something, results of a meeting, results of the brainstorming, or we can use it to actually do the brainstorming. You are the one who limit the tool. The tool is not limited, you know? It's just about how, how you actually would use it. And, it, and it, it allows people, you know what happens? I think in general, with HR people, once they have a tool that they feel they can use, you have a sense of empowerment that is incredible. You know, you have that like, one more thing, you know, that I can use. Because when things don't go well, and I've used a tool, if I have another tool, then I feel much better than saying, now what do I do? I've tried it, it doesn't work. You know what I'm saying? So the more tools you have, the better it is that you are. And that's exactly what we're trying to do, is make it a tool, not something that Tony Buzan comes and talks about, but actually something that you would want to use and that you can use. People don't use something that they're not comfortable with. They're just not going to think for yourself first. Try it. Organize your day. Organize your weekend. Organize. Decide if you're going to do an MBA or not. Put MBA in the middle. Put cost, benefits, career development. Uh, uh, whatever you know, do that and start to use it to start to think about what it is that you want to concentrate on. 